Hey, welcome back to JG3 Reviews. I'm James and I review fountain pens and all related kind of things. I have uh, one particular kind of pen that I'm always on the lookout for, even though I have some good ones, and that is a pocket pen. And I've got one I want to share with you today, and that's the Fuller One 2062. I found some other good ones along the way. This Delight Brass pen is with me almost every single day, an absolute favorite of mine and rock solid reliable. I had this pen, which is the Arara, and I have it in brass, and I have it in this kind of a faux aluminum. I'm going to review this one soon, so I'll explain that when I do. But these two excellent pens for the money. So when I saw uh, that someone else had this Fulham 2062 and they really liked it, I thought, you know, I should check that one out. It's been around a while and you may have seen this pen reviewed by other people, but I wanted to share with you my experience with a, my newest pocket pen and whether or not it would actually make the, uh, the daily carry list like these two really reliable options do. So let's flip that camera. We will look at this pen, what it's made of and, and how it writes and all that good stuff and whether or not I think it deserves to be in the same pocket with these other two favorites of mine. All right, let's take a look at the Fulawin 2062 Pocket Pen. Of course, there's not a lot going on here. This is a nice, simple design. I think it's a tasteful design. Uh, I have mine in classic black, uh, but it is available in a lot of different colors. And while this is a plastic pen, uh, there are all metal versions with a uh, crisscross pattern uh, grooved into them. So if you want a metal pen, uh, that is available. Uh, let's start at this end at the bottom. We'll start at the bottom of the barrel, work our way up just like work, right? So you had this uh, chromed in with threads, and those are soft threads, wide threads. You have the Fulawin logo, which I think is nicely done. And then just a normal straight black barrel that comes up to a wide torpedo shaped cap with a good clip on it, very strong, maybe even a touch too stiff maybe, uh, and then just, you know, domed end. There's no finial or anything like that. It's a very simple looking pin, as you can see there. When you take the cap off, which takes, let's see, one and less than one and a quarter, it seems like, very quick to take off, which is good for a pocket pin, you find the shortest grip section in the world. Uh, that is just a very tiny section. I actually can write holding uh, this pen on that tiny section and uh, it's not uncomfortable though you are going to feel the threads if you have fingers uh, at all and then it uh, is better, I find it smoother to write with, uh, just up here. I don't know what I was going to say and but there you are. I, it just brain freeze. The nib is the often seen IPG nib, Iridium Point, Germany. So you probably recognize this from other Chinese pens. It writes well. It writes, uh, I think it's sufficiently smooth. It's not buttery smooth, but sufficiently smooth. And it's a good nib with a plastic feed. So you could swap this out if you wanted, say, a, a bent nib or mini fude, something like that, and you've got an extra number five lying around. I would think you could do that. I haven't tried it, but I would think you could. Um, let's unscrew that. And it is on there a little bit tight. That's good. You don't want ink in your pocket, right? Again, now you really see how short that grip section really is. Uh, but uh, this is metal. And then you come to the uh, converter, the included converter is short and so it does not have a very large capacity so I'm going to tell you that straight up front and it's a slider it's worked well I haven't had any problems with it sliders aren't my favorite but uh, so far this one has been fine and I've been using this for over a month and not had any problems so I can't complain I have Lexington gray from noodlers in this pen just in case you're curious but we'll see that in the writing sample. Uh, you can, I should mention this, you can take this out and use international shorts. So if you don't like the slider or you just, you know, sometimes in pocket pens, I, because they're meant for convenience, I just use a cartridge, although these both have their converters in them. And uh, I think this with uh, international short cartridge would be great. So that's, that has that possibility if that's something that you like. I don't think you could eyedropper it. Uh, so you're going to have to use the converter or a cartridge. But overall, just a very simple, straightforward, 
pocket pin. Convenient size, great in a shirt pocket or a pants pocket, either one since it does have a clip. Uh, just really, really good and comfortable uh, enough, especially if you if you high grip it, then it's then it's perfectly fine. But I, I don't have trouble with the uh, the grips. There is a little bit, I guess, of the sharp edge, and that would be from the barrel, not from the threads. But it hasn't been a problem when I'm riding with it. I found it to be just fine. It's just long enough that for a quick note, I don't post it. But for anything else, uh, you screw that on and you're going to post it. Actually, while I've got that done, let me share with you just a nice little attention to detail thing about this pen that I kind of appreciate. And that is, you will notice that when you post it, the clip, the logo, and the nib are all aligned. And that I kind of appreciate. I don't know if that's every pen or if I just really, you know, the stars aligned and the section aligned and the clip aligned, whatever. Uh, but if that's on purpose, then, you know, kudos to Fullowin for getting that right because I kind of like that. Just, just a nice little thing. Anyway, let's see how this pen actually writes because in the end, just because I can carry it with me everywhere doesn't mean I want to. Let's check it out. All right, let's see how the pen writes. This is again the Fullowin 2062, and this has a fine nib that I would say writes about like a Western fine. It's it's not a, a real fine line. It's it's more a Western fine or a an Japanese medium, and this is. Noodler's Lexington Gray, which, let me just say, I really like this ink. I'm going to be quiet and let you listen to this. And... Let's check the wetness. So, fairly wet. That's fairly wet. Now you can really tell that this is that gray uh, there more than you can up here. So it's fairly wet and that's why that's a little bit darker shaded. On uh, In some pens and uh, on certain paper, this looks almost just like a good graphite pencil more than it does a uh, fountain pen ink. And that's what I like about it actually. Really cool. All right, so you can see all of that. I, th I find that it writes quite smoothly, uh, not just like buttery, buttery smooth, uh, but not feedbacky, not scratchy. Uh, the flow, as you can see, is quite good, keeps up no problem whatsoever there. So. I just find that it's it's a good writing pen, and for a pocket pen where you're going to get it out, and you know you're just going to do a lot of quick writing, maybe just scribble your name. Because if honestly, if I'm writing my name that quickly, that's how bad it's going to look. Uh, then it's it works great, no problem whatsoever, and uh, I found it reliable. It does, and I don't know. I've only used this ink in the pen. I will put that caveat to it. I do get a little bit of dry out after, you know, a couple of weeks, which that's that's true of a lot of pens, even pens that I think are quite good. Uh, so there is that. Other than that, I've had no problems. I've had no leaks. I've had no, uh, in just in normal writing where I'm using it kind of every day, I've had no hard start skipping or anything like that, just if it's been a couple of weeks. Quick dip in water and you're, you're ready to go. It's not clogging or drying out on the inside. It's just, you know, a lot of pens do that. So that's... Uh, that, that's the only issue I've had, and that's not really an issue. That's That just kind of happens with a lot of pens. So I'm always just more impressed when it doesn't happen. Speaking of which, this and this, the, I, I'm going to do the size comparison, are very close in size, but this is a lighter pen. If you feel like these metal pens, which are popular among uh, pocket pen users, if you don't like the weight of those, then getting this one in plastic is probably going to be uh, better for you. Not an expensive pen, so you're not going to pay uh, the same as, say, uh, it's going to be a bargain compared to, say, a Caveco. I love a Caveco Sport. This is a little bit bigger, uh, 
but it does have a built-in clip, and you're not going to cry as much if you lose it, you know? So there is definitely that involved. But all of these pens were, this was more, uh, but I would say this Arata, just off the top of my head, was in the same price range as that Fullet one that I like was a bit more. But I'll put a link to all three of these in the description so you can window shop there. But I, I find it, it writes really well, and I, I like all of these. That's for size. Just to give that uh, some perspective, this is a normal-sized pen. So there's a, a Wing Sung. Uh, here is a, uh, a Carandash 849 and a, uh, a Paper Mate Ink Joy, just to throw things off a little bit, give you a little bit extra color. But that gives you an idea of the size of that pen. So, do I like it? Yeah, I do. It's a handy little pen. It's comfortable enough to write with. Now, I will say both of these are more comfortable because they have more normal sized sections, but they're also heavier pens. Um, it's, it's, I would choose this for a shirt pocket over these. Some of my shirt pockets aren't long enough for a full size pen, and this is the one I would choose in that case because these. I don't really think they could do well in shirt pockets. They weigh the pocket down and mess up the material and all that kind of stuff. You don't want to know all that, but it's there. Uh, that then is the one I would pick in that circumstance. So, you know, it's nice to have options, and that gives you a few more options, and it's a fun little unusual pen. It's not copying anything as far as I can tell, and that always gives it a plus. And so uh, there you go. That's the, the uh, which pen am I looking at? I'm going to say the wrong name. That's the Fuller one, 2062. Y'all have a great week. I hope you had a good Thanksgiving and uh, you're staying well and, and having a great time writing with your favorite pens. God bless you and have a great week.